This is one of the easiest ways to make sourdough bagels at home. I've been making this recipe four or five times a year for the last three years, and it really doesn't feel like enough. Here's how to make them. Get your sourdough starter out of the fridge. I keep about 25 grams of starter in a jar like this. Add 50 grams of water to the jar, then stir it around to mix up the leftover starter with the water. Then add 50 grams of bread flour. I'm using King Arthur brand of bread flour. If you're in the US, you can use the same one I'm using. Feed your starter and then mark the top of the jar with a rubber band so you can see how much it's going to grow overnight. And then let the starter sit out at room temperature to rise overnight for about eight to 12 hours or until it looks like this. The next morning, my starter had doubled in size and it was ready to use. Now to mix the dough, add 225 grams of water to a mixing bowl. This is gonna end up being a 55% hydration dough. Bagels have a very low hydration compared to other breads that you might be familiar with making. After the water, add 10 grams of kosher salt or sea salt, and then 100 grams of the active sourdough starter that you fed the night before. You should still have a little bit of starter left over in the jar, and you can put that back in the fridge for next time. Most good bagel recipes will call for a little bit of liquid sweetener in the dough. So I'm adding 20 grams of honey because that's usually what I have on hand in my kitchen cabinet, but you could really use any sweetener that you want to. For San Francisco style or Montreal style bagels, they usually use honey. In New York, they use barley malt syrup. Use whatever you have, even 20 grams of sugar will be fine. Now quickly stir the liquid portion of the ingredients together and then we can add the flour. Straight into the mixing bowl goes 450 grams of bread flour. Stir everything together to incorporate all the ingredients. You won't be able to completely get rid of all the dry bits of flour just by stirring because this is such a low hydration dough, it's very stiff. So just do your best, get as much of the water into the flour as you can, and then transition the bowl to your stand mixer or onto the counter to knead by hand. I'm using my stand mixer today because that's what I prefer to do for bagels with such a low hydration dough. If you're kneading by hand, it should take about eight to 10 minutes of kneading. Just keep kneading until there aren't any dry bits of flour left on the counter and the dough feels strong and you've got a nice smooth ball of dough. If you're using a stand mixer, let the dough go on low speed for about a minute till the dough comes together like this. Then switch the mixer to medium speed and let the dough knead for about eight more minutes. The dough should gain a lot of strength during that time as the gluten develops and the dough will eventually pick up all of those little pieces of dough that are stuck to the sides of the bowl and the bowl should be completely clean by the end of the kneading. At this point, give the dough a few more kneads by hand on the counter just to shape it into a ball. You wanna get a smooth surface on the top of the dough and have all the edges meet underneath the dough, creating a seam. Once you have formed the dough into a smooth ball, it's time for the bulk fermentation or the first rise. Transfer the dough into your mixing bowl to rise or you can put it in a glass bowl like this one. I like to put a little bit of oil in the bowl so the dough doesn't stick. And I really prefer the glass bowl because I can see through the sides to see how much the dough has risen during the bulk fermentation. Press the dough down so it's flat just so you can be sure exactly how much it's rising. Sometimes when the top is domed, it's not quite as easy to see how much is actually rising. Then cover the dough up and let it rise at room temperature for about six to eight hours or until it's doubled in size and looks something like this. This could take even longer if it's colder in your kitchen or it could go faster if it's warm in your kitchen. Now it's time to shape the bagels into their classic bagel shape and I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do that. Start by flattening out the whole mass of dough on your counter. Don't worry about trying to preserve the air bubbles when you're flattening it out. That is not really important for this style of bread. Now simply divide your bagel dough into six even portions. You can do this by eye or you can do it by weight. Weighing each piece of bagel dough to the exact same gram amount will obviously produce a much more consistent result, bagels that look a lot more similar in size, but it really doesn't matter. If you wanna do this by eye, that's completely fine. Now with each piece of dough divided, it's time to pre-shape each piece into a ball. This is how I do that. I start by just giving each piece some stretches and folds. You're creating a smooth side on the top and a seam side underneath. I just catch each edge of the dough with my thumb, creating a seam. Then I flip the dough ball over so the smooth side is facing up and I roll it against the counter a few times with my hand like this. That creates a smooth ball of dough with a smooth seam underneath. For now, just do that with each piece of dough until they're all pre-shaped into balls. Then cover the dough up with a kitchen towel and let them relax for 15 minutes until we're ready for the final shape. When your bagels are ready to shape, prepare a half-size sheet tray or a cookie sheet with a little bit of cornmeal. If you don't have cornmeal, you could use a little bit of semolina flour or bread flour, anything to give it just a slight non-stick barrier. 
Now to give these bagels their classic shape and that final ring-like appearance. Uncover the dough and top each piece with just a little bit of bread flour for non-stick, and then just jam your thumb or index finger into the center of one of the dough balls. This is what I like to call the cheater method for forming your bagels into the classic ring shape. Almost all professional bakeries will roll out long strips of dough and then roll the two ends together to form a ring, but I find this method to be just so much easier to get consistent results when I'm baking at home. Since I'm not making bagels all the time, this is just easier for me. And as long as it looks like a bagel in the end and tastes like a bagel, it's a bagel. Once you've got a hole in the center of the dough, you're just going to spin the dough around in circles, widening the hole as you go. Stretch the dough out until the hole is a little bit wider than what you would normally consider to be normal, because when you boil the bagels later and they bake, the hole is going to shrink a little bit as the bagel puffs up. So get a hole that's a little bit bigger now than what you think is normal. Transfer the bagel with the smooth side up onto your baking tray, and then proceed to do the same shaping process to each of the remaining bagels. Once all the bagels have been shaped, it's time to cover them up and let them go through their final proof. Let them rise at room temperature for about three hours or until they're doubled in size like this. This final proof will not only add to the flavor and texture of these bagels, but it also puffs them up with air, which is necessary for them to be able to float when you boil them in water later. So make sure that they truly puff up and double in size during the final proof. Now you can just boil these bagels right now and start baking them, but I like to cover them up and move them to the fridge for a long overnight fermentation. This is what a lot of bagel places do to develop extra flavor and chewiness in the bagels. So the next day or whenever you are ready to bake, go ahead and preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, then uncover the bagels from the fridge. Another benefit to the long cold proof is that the bagels are harder, they're colder, and they're easy to pick up off of the baking tray and move into the water. Speaking of water, you'll need a large pot on the stove ready to boil, and then a wire rack to hold your bagels. Then whatever seeds or toppings you want to put on your bagels, I'm using black and white sesame seeds, and then your bagels are ready to boil. Bring a few quarts or liters of water to a boil in your heavy bottomed pot. It has to be enough water so that the bagels can float in the water without touching the bottom. Then add about one tablespoon of honey or whatever liquid sweetener you used in your bagel dough. This supposedly gives a little bit of shine to the outside of the bagels after you bake them. Once your honey is dissolved and the water is up to a boil, you can go ahead and drop your bagels directly into that boiling water. This is the test here. You want to see your bagels floating like mine did. That's a testament to a successful final proof. That means my dough has been filled up with air. If the bagels don't float within the first few seconds, it really just means that they needed more proofing time during the final proof. Boiling bagels gives them the classic chewy texture that we know and love about bagels, so this is not a step to skip. Boil them for one minute on the first side, then flip each bagel over and boil them for another minute on the other side. Some people think more boiling equals chewier bagels, but I like to stick to about one minute per side. Take the bagels out of the pot one by one and drain them of the excess water, then move them over to the wire rack to rest. Boil the rest of the bagels one minute per side while the first ones are resting until you've boiled through the whole batch of bagels. When the bagels have come out of the boiling water and just barely rested, they're at the perfect point to dip in the toppings that you're topping your bagels with. There's a naturally starchy wet coating on the outside of each bagel that'll help the seeds to stick to the outside. Dip each bagel on each side into the seasoning blend of your choice and then move it to the baking sheet or cookie sheet to rest. Do that to each remaining bagel and if you find that they've dried out a little bit too much and they won't stick to the seeds, you can spread a little bit of the boiling water back on top of the bagel. That'll put the wet starchy film back on top of the bagel and it'll help the seasonings to stick. Move the bagels to a middle or lower rack of your oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit and bake them for 20 minutes. If you have them on top of a baking stone or baking steel, that's even better, but it's not required. After 20 minutes of baking, the bagels should be golden brown and ready to pull out of the oven. Transfer these onto a wire rack to cool, but they don't have to cool for long because it's completely fine to break into a warm bagel. Bagels are always going to feel dense and chewy. That is just what you're looking for with a bagel. But as you can see on the inside of these bagels, they are light and airy, and that just points to the natural long fermentation that these went through. 
And the flavor is absolutely amazing. There's a little tiny bit of a tang, but it's almost imperceptible. These just taste like great artisan bagels the way they were meant to taste. You can top these bagels with whatever you want, fill them with whatever you want, slice them however you want. So if you have a sourdough starter at home, I'm telling you, you need to make these sourdough bagels. Skip out on the yeasted bagels, make these ones first. The recipe is in the description below.